Welcome back to Carpenter's Diary. In the previous episodes, we talked about budget and comparing quotations. Why should price not be the only consideration? We have quite a few reasons, but of course, the one that comes to mind is that nowadays, the market is very transparent. The only way to reduce price is to lower quality, use thinner material, and provide lousy workmanship. For example, for workmanship-wise, a proper job takes about three days. But if someone can complete it in one day, what do you think went wrong? Of course, there is cutting of corners. So the problem here is that it looks the same externally. That's why so many people are doing it. But the structure and the material, they are all different. I can tell you very frankly that if it is a price war, Renault Scout is going to lose every single time. Why? Because we are a local company. We have local employees. We have a local factory. We cannot compete with people that are from, let's say, Malaysia. They have a Malaysia-run factory. The costs are all in Malaysian Ringgit. They don't have work permit workers. The people who come into Singapore to finish the carpentry built on your house, they come in for three days and we call them Tasui Zan. They are illegal workers. I can put this out there because this is what's happening in the trade. I will not name any names, but well, the authorities know about it, but it's just hard for them to catch everyone. So when we have this kind of cost cutting, you can only go that far. What is the consequence for a homeowner that chooses price as the first determinant? What happens when your carpenters disappear after the installation process, they so-called finish the job, but it's a poorly done job? Who do you have as your ratification and defects check person? Go back to your designer. Your designer is not a carpenter. So a lot of designers, they will just find some excuses and or give you some discount at the back. So either way, this is what is known in the trade. So anyway, people experience it before. I'm just telling you based on my customer's experiences and letting you make an informed decision that price should not be a determining factor. But if the war is on quality, then I'm very confident that Renault Scout is up there. Why can I say this? It's because the well-known interior designers, the big names out there, we actually take jobs from them as well. We are their subcontractors. In some cases, we build some of the shopping center showrooms. We build condo showrooms as well. The showrooms that we are talking about, is not the showroom that is going to be tear down after you buy a flat or after you buy the condo. The showrooms we are talking about is those that are unsold after six months of TOP or before TOP. We go in, we renovate the place, the budget is easily in the six-figure sum. The designer decorates the place with furniture, it's moving condition, perfume and everything. So now they're selling to a ready target. This kind of showroom, the expectation of the workmanship is the cream of the crop. Not all carpenters can build these kind of showrooms. So we are one of them. You can see from my face, I'm very proud. But that is after three generations, the accolades that we built up. So I'm okay if you, if you say that this is something that um, you can see the pride on my face. But this is why we take pride in Renault Scout's work. A lot of homeowners are now very savvy. So that is why we have non-stop projects and our reviews are fantastic. So in summary, I got a Chinese phrase for you. A lot of people say this about Renault Scout, which is 10 words. 用了都说好,没用都说贵. You'll be very surprised that actually the price difference that we are talking about here it's not a lot. Sometimes it is just 10%. Depends on the material choice and the workmanship requirement and special requests like using ABS to finish the edge. In fact, all ages of the carpet. We've done that before. That will add up to your workmanship cost as well. But in actual cases where you compare Apple to Apple, you're talking about 10% or less. So this is the price of doing a job well. Cost is not always the first priority. It is true that there are contractors out there or even companies out there, IDs out there that can charge very cheap to finish a job. But at what expense in terms of quality, workmanship and togong jian liao, that means shortchanging you of the correct materials. There are very, very uh, absurd cases. Just a quick example. For Siemens Creek, for us, it costs a certain amount of money depending on the size of the unit. So let's say it costs $2,300 for a four-room flat. We had a competitor that charged only $1,008. So where is the $500 going? I don't have a markup of $500. So I am unable to take out the project at $1,800. So the day when they were doing their cement script, I went out to take a look. 
because I want to know who my competitor is and how they can cut the cost. Oh, you'll be amazed of what happened. I was shocked to see what's happening. They flooded the unit with a water hose. They poured packets of cement onto it and they started to mix the cement on site. I've never seen anything like that. I've never seen people wetting the whole floor like a swimming pool and doing cement scrap this way. So what's the end result? The end result is that the unit should have been dried a week ago. It took three weeks to dry the unit with fan and spotlights to go and try to dry up the cement scrap. Why do we need to dry the cement scrap? Because when cement scrap is not dry, the vinyl floor cannot go on it because the moisture will be trapped forever. And the worst thing is that project had their vinyl flooring installed and taken apart three times because the cement was not level. What happened in that project is that there was no self-leveling. This is a step that the owner did ask me, is it necessary? I say for all cement scrap, when you're accepting vinyl floor, we will do a self-leveling. That is my take on all my projects. I want it to be perfectly flat before we lay in our flooring so that you do not face the issue of walking and you feel that your floor is actually moving. The movement is because the floor is not level. How would that be? You say the people are professional. Yes, they are professional. They are professional and making quick money. It's a real life project. So they had to redo the veneer one more time. It didn't work. They pluck it all out again. After the second removal and installation, the veneer contractors were very upset as well because that job cannot seem to finish. So self-leveling was done. Wait another week for it to dry. Back the third time, lay the vinyl floor again. So in terms of completion date, the whole project was delayed by five weeks. Is that something that you should save $500 over? No. That example happened to one of my customers. So I feel very embarrassed because I warned them not to take up that cheap option of $1,800 on that cement screen. They chose to ignore my advice. They had to pay the price of delaying their moving by five weeks. I finished my project on time. I finished my carpentry, I finished everything else. But the veneer contractors had a big issue with them. Having to go back to a job site for three times, there will be additional costs incurred by the owner because this is of no fault to the veneer contractors. I had to go in and try to resolve for them, try to bargain for a bit of discount. But the thing is, it's not fair for the flooring contractor as well. I fully understand it. So the charges have been incurred, the time has been spent. In my many years in the industry, there are even worse cases. Cases of walls falling off for landed property because there was no rebar reinforcement given. There are many shoddy works done out there. I don't want you all to experience it let alone come across this kind of contractors. So do bear in mind that cost should not be the only concern. Look through whether they are legit. Go to their Facebook page. Do they have customer reviews? And generally, what's your vibe of that person? I'm not a very I'm a very straightforward and honest guy. So I do step on people's toes. But let the truth be told, I'm here to do a good job. And hopefully, I can change the industry for good because I'm sick and tired of seeing all the shoddy work that have been done from predecessors that came before us. So in your meetings with your contractor or interior designer, what's the feeling, what's the gut feel that you have in the interaction with them? Because the project is going to last at least two months. If you don't have a proper working relationship from day one, especially if things are unclear and you try to ask for answers and the answers are not given, this is a telltale sign that something's not right. So you got to feel comfortable, you got to feel that you can trust the person and hand over the keys to them and they will hand over the keys back to you in the perfect condition. So we hope that this video has given you more clarity on how to pick your interior designer or renovation contractor. Now you can take the next step of confidently realizing your dream home. So once again, this is Reese from Reno Scout. If you like our videos, hit subscribe, hit the notification button, like us on Facebook, and we'll see you in the next video.